Jillian Sidoti with crowdfundinglawyers.net. This is our segment, People You Should Know. And before I introduce our special guest today, I just want to remind all of you, you've got to go get your tickets to Crowd Converge 2017 right now before we run out or before you miss any special pricing uh, if you are looking to raise money for your business or build your crowdfunding platform or you're a service provider for the crowdfunding industry you need to come to this event because we're putting all of you into one room to network to figure out what everybody does to find the resources you need to be successful and to invest today is mr michael klein of freedom financial funds hi michael how are you today great thank you thanks for having me today uh, you're very welcome. I appreciate you coming. And please tell us about Freedom Financial and what you guys do. Sure. We're a uh, debt fund, uh, special accounts that allows us to do more than just ordinary private debt. Um, we, we're focused on providing uh, debt to real estate professionals that are adding value in some way to real estate. So um, our, our typical scenario is that someone has gone in and they're buying a mismanaged asset and, and repositioning that asset. Maybe they have leases in hand um, or they have a business plan that, um, uh, that makes sense given the market that they're working in or they're doing ground up construction. Most of our commercial ground up construction is pre-leased um, or at least significantly pre-leased. Um, that doesn't work in apartments or single family homes. So in those cases, uh, there's a speculative um, uh, aspect to it. Uh, we are doing this primarily in the Western United States. Um, the more speculative in nature, the closer to home because the more we understand our markets. Um, and uh, we've raised um, a little over $50 million in our first five months of existence. So um, we're pretty happy about that. Now we have to find homes for it. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell us what, okay, there's so many questions in those last couple of statements that you made that I know our viewers are going to want to know the answers to. So first of all, what made you decide to go into private lending as opposed to a more traditional route of real estate investing? Yeah, so um, I spent about 20 years of my career in um uh, banking, uh, both in corporate finance and real estate finance, in, in um, originations of loans, um, in, in working out loans and approving loans and auditing loans uh, throughout the world. So um, I, I know lending really well. And, um, and I saw back in, um, in the mid-2000s that this was actually um, an area where the banks were really breaking down. Uh, the banks had made a bunch of decisions back in the late 80s to uh, consolidate, um, to start to call their loans products, and to um, um, eliminate training. And so by the mid-2000s, I could see the handwriting on the wall that um, it, as long as you could conform your business plan to meet whatever the bank's product was, you might get a loan. Um, and if you were lucky, you might get to talk to somebody that actually understood what they were doing. So I started putting together a business plan. And back in 08, uh, um, with the help of a, um, with, with, with the help of a co-founder, we started a, uh, a fund in this space and grew that fund to um, uh, a pretty good size. We had about $180 million of, uh, of commitments and it done uh, just under a billion dollars worth of financings in, in a seven year period. Um, this year, I decided to do that for my own account. And I was very blessed that um, I was joined by an extraordinary group of, um, of senior executives to start the fund with me. Um, so combined, we have tremendous amounts of experience. And I think what borrowers will find is in our space, which typically is in the one to $10 million range, you just can't go to a bank on a consistent basis. There's always exceptions and find people with our level of uh, experience and knowledge and know how and how to get things done and ability to structure deals to actually match your business plan versus you trying to con contort your business plan to match some product. 
So, I mean, that's such a great, oh my gosh, I have so many questions. We might have to come back and do another interview. So, <laughs> so first and foremost, um, for our viewers out there who are looking for money for their deals and they would like to leverage, um, coming to you, am I hearing that you're saying you can move faster and you'll have a better understanding of the deal than say a traditional bank? Yeah, so, you know, our typical turnaround times, if the borrower is doing everything the borrower needs to do, because there's there's things that we can't control. Um, mm -hmm. We'll do a bridge loan in two weeks. We'll do a construction loan in three weeks from scratch for a new client. Um, in the past, I mean, our land speed records are, uh, we did a, a program with um, Build-A-Suits for a particular client. Um, and he was rolling out a number of them all at once. We closed six construction loans for that client in seven weeks. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so, gosh. yeah. So, so we can move really fast. We don't, we, 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 we have some regulatory oversight, but certainly not the levels that banks are burdened with today. Mm -hmm. And so if we can make sense of the deal, we're comfortable with the people that are executing it. We can move very, very quickly. That's awesome. So, okay. So let's shift gears for a little bit um, and talk about the raising of money. You made a, a profound statement at the beginning, which is that you raised $50 million in about five months. Um, yes. So um, we're, you know, we had a really good track record at the fund I managed. Oh, I thought you were going to say you had a really good securities attorney, but. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we had a very good securities attorney that was very easy to work with. Um, so um, uh, that helped. Actually, that helped a lot because we weren't going back. I, I've done, I've, you know, in, in the prior fund, we worked with a much more a big, big name, you know, <laughs> firm um, that the, the sort of firms that you um, might recognize if you work at a Wall Street bank. And um um, you know, there was a lot of arguments about um, making things work the way we wanted them to work, and they um, they had their set ways. We were able to work very well together. And <laughs> I, I was season, but thank you for the interest. <laughs> yeah, no, getting getting things done. So I really appreciate that. Um, what we, we had, I, I, you know, between my colleagues and I, we had a number of uh, relationships already, and and so um, that that helped uh, quite quite a bit. Um, uh, we had uh, the fund I ran prior to this one. We had seven years of operating history with, with no loans going past due 30 days or, or uh, over 30 days. So, um, and we originated over 300 loans in, in seven years. So we are careful underwriters. Um, and and um, so we had a decent track record. We were able to go to people that knew us uh, for a long time um, decades and um, tell them what we were up to and, and they were quick to sign up. So that, that helped quite a bit. And then um, we've, we've also raised in um, these managed accounts um, a fair amount of money to uh, allow us to do high leverage deals, um, and it, which is kind of an interesting program. So, um, and so I'll use that as a segue into explaining that um, a traditional private lenders um, are staying to 60, 65% of value. And I think that's prudent um, because if you go back in time and look at um, most losses in real estate lending, they occur over when, when, when the lender goes over 65% loan to value. Um, oh. so, um, so most private lenders stick to that 60, 65%. That doesn't always work for the developer. Um, if, if you're going in and you're adding a lot of value and the exit strategy is to um, sell it, well, maybe higher leverage makes sense. We have the ability, uh, depending upon the uh, circumstances, to increase that loan to value from, say, 60% to 80% which usually translates into 90% loan to cost. So um, we do that with the, par with the partnerships that we have um, in, in, in that capital that we've raised, because they'll take that risk. And, 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 you know, so. 
so what kind of borrower, are, and I'm assuming you're looking for borrowers, what kind of borrowers are you looking for? People that, that have experience and some track record. Um, okay. they, don't, they don't have to have um, uh, a track record um, that's a mile long, but we're, we're not really interested in the guy who is um, building his first house. Um, or um, the the gal that's buying their first apartment building. It, it just um, we're we're looking for a real estate professional that has some track record. Now that being said, they could have stubbed their toes, um, and 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 certainly in the downturn that um, you know happened in in um, starting in 08, um, a lot of people got hurt, and um, so it depends on how they behaved um, during that downturn. Uh, we, we, we have lots of relationships with people that literally got crushed in that downturn. But when you talk to the people that they uh, were borrowing from back then, they did all, all the right things and everything they could possibly do to minimize the loss to uh, not only themselves, but to the uh, lenders and their equity partners. Um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do business with those folks. All, um, uh, you know, so um that's that's who we're looking for. Um, okay. Yeah. So. All right. That's awesome. So, well, okay. You said it all, and yet I feel like we need to talk again. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> any any last advice for our viewers? Uh, in getting a loan, um, the the number one the, for me, and I look at a lot of loan packages. So, um, you know, in any given week, I. I I, I could look at 15 deals. So how do you get, how do you get yours to rise to the top? Um, well, first and foremost, uh, have a logical presentation of your information, have a good deal summary. Um, we often get um, stuffed with, with uh, 25 uh, attachments and, and we don't even know if we want to look, do the deal. So uh -huh. the best thing to do is to do like a three page summary that basically talks about what you plan on doing. So acquire an apartment, empty it out, get, get, you know, re rehab it and then re rent it um, at X rents, um, increasing the value from X to Y. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then why, why does that make sense? You know, uh, talk about, uh, nearby comps that support the rents, then why is it that you're uniquely qualified to do this? You know, you've done it five times before. Here's what the results were. Okay. Now I've got in a relatively short period of time, what you want to do, why you think it's going to work and why you're uniquely capable of doing it. Um, if all that makes sense, then, then, then I'm still reading. So then you tell me what the capital stack is. Oh, we're go we need five million dollars. We've raised a million five, and we need the other the other three and a half million dollars. Um, okay, now I know what you're asking for, and our ultimate plan is to sell this, or our ultimate plan is to refinance it. So now I know how you plan on paying it back. So that's really pretty easy to do. Um, it's amazing how few people do that well. So. Um, it's just a matter. I, I, I've told um, many, many people that I really am looking for the answers to six things, and and that's and that's it. So if you can remember these six things, just write them down and go with this. Okay. We we always we always evaluate who the people are, what their credit is, and then what's the real estate. Okay. And then we're always looking at every loan. What's the money for? How's it going to get repaid? And if that doesn't work out, how's it going to get repaid? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's it, lending's pretty straightforward. It, um, I, I've looked at lending all over the world uh, for all sorts of different types of companies. And it always really comes down to those, those things. It's, you know, w w it, it always comes down to who's the management team involved. Um, and what are their experiences and why are they qualified to do what they need to do? Um, what's the, what's their credit? What's their credit like? Have they stubbed their toes? What did they do when they did? Um, and, and then, um, 
uh, and then, you know, what, what in this case, what's the real estate, which is ultimately our collateral. Um, and then why do they want the money? How are they going to pay it back? And then what's the plan B? Um, as we get late in the cycle here, um, seven and a half years, uh, we start seeing um, th that plan A is the only viable plan and plan B is hope. Um, hope is a terrible business plan. So, so you know. You just said something interesting. I mean, here you started this big fund and then and now it's the end of the cycle. Yes. How does Freedom Financial adjust? towards the end of a cycle? Yeah, so it means that we're underwriting more carefully um, than ever. Um, that isn't to say that we didn't underwrite carefully before, but but um, we now are looking for um, basis uh, much more carefully, right? So um, we're looking at why does this, why does this particular project have a unique position in its market to compete if we're to see a 20% erosion in cash flows. So, um, you know, and, 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 and so we can um, uh, look at that. Why, why does the sponsorship have the ability to withstand some um, duress? Um, so it, it, it's, it's a difficult time. I think real estate investing, like all forms of investing, is... Um, is, is a process of sort of uh, being blindfolded and walking the plank. You know that there's an end to that plank. You just don't know where it is. Um, I think, uh, was it Yogi Berra that said, um, making predictions um, are, is very difficult, especially about the future. That, I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's the environment that we all investors, and we're an investor, we're investing in the debt that we originate, um, are, always making so we're, we're we're at a we're at a point where we're trying to get clients money to work um at at on the one hand on the other hand we're making sure that when it works we're doing our best to make sure that it comes back okay i drew a little picture and i want you to analyze the picture for me i hope everybody can see this okay all right uh, so, this, this, so, so this is awesome okay so uh, <laughs> this is um Wait, I, I see a mountain. No, it's not one of those pictogram things for psychology no, tests. No, this is not a psychological exam. Okay. Right. <laughs> but, okay, so here we are in 2008, right? Bottom right. economy, and then yeah. everybody starts buying, and we go up, and and then, then we hit another quadrant, and we go down. Where are we now? Uh, are well, we here, or are we here? You know, I'm, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna answer that question by splitting the difference. I think right this minute we're we're probably real real close to that that middle line that that top right, right um, here. Yeah, that's okay. sort of the sort of that weight. I called it about in November that weightless feeling you get on a roller coaster ride when you've <laughs> when you've when you've reached the top. Um, but what we never know is, is there another up from here? You know, is that just one of those false weightless feelings or are we on the downside? The economic data is so all over the board, right? So one day you, you read about um, something terrible. The next day you read about something good. Um, you know, restaurant sales are down. Well, that's generally not good for the economy. Manufacturing is down down, not good for the economy. Auto sales, so-so, not good for the economy. Housing starts up. Eh, I'm not so sure that's a, a leading indicator. Um, it does create jobs, but um, um, all of us in the real estate business know that to be a developer, you have to be optimistic. So, um, but, but then you read the jobs reports overall, they're pretty good. We're short on housing throughout the United States. That's a good thing. So, there's not a lot of overbuilt markets. There are always micro um, micro markets that get overbuilt. Um, so right now, I'd say we're kind of in the middle there, and it's really dependent on um, how the next administration um, creates confidence in all of us to um, uh, look look at the sunny side of everything versus looking at the downside mm -hmm. of everything. And economies, 
economies are driven by people's attitudes. And um, when in the, in the throes of the downturn, I used to tell my colleagues that not only was it a great time for us, because when everything's on, when everybody, when everybody's running, running into the streets, claiming that the buildings are on fire, it, it's a great time to go into the buildings. Um, and you can make a, a, a lot of money doing that. <laughs> um, but, um, but, but when people would ask, when do you think there's going to be recovery? And I, when people got, uh, my answer is always when people got good and tired of being pessimistic, because we're all optimistic, <laughs> you know, at, at the end of the day, we, we get out of bed because we're optimistic by nature. Okay. So fair enough. So do we keep buying? Um, I think we keep buying carefully. Um, you don't want to be, well, look, you don't want to be a retail buyer. Okay, no. so so the um, the the TV, you know, the people that show up on TV or the radio guys or the guys who are selling some sort of um, no money down, invest in real estate, make a fortune. Eh, I'm less optimistic about those guys, and they all show up toward the end of the cycle. Right. Um, but um, you know, there's there's always there's always interesting transactions out there. Um, my daughter just uncovered one for me she all over this thing in in the middle part of the country um uh, where she lives and somebody is under the gun to make a 1031 um work because they want to get out of a portfolio of rented single family homes and um and you know on the initial look there's probably 20 percent markup if you want to break up the portfolio they don't want to go through the breakup because they can't make their 1031 change work. Oh. So, so they've got 20 something units that they're managing and going crazy with. Okay. And they want to, they want to flip into 45 or 50 unit apartment building, which is a, you know, a better um, vehicle really for, for residential renting. And um, uh, so there's, so there's a unique need at this very moment that allows you to buy at a wholesale type pricing. Um, that but, is so you know, cool that she recognized that this is not where it should be on an individualized basis because these people need to do this 1031. So those people are not going to make as much money as they could, but they're going to get the tax. Right. Uh, of, not aversion. I didn't say aversion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tax deferral on right. the 1031, which will probably you know, help them. I mean, who knows what their particular tax situation is. Well, I'm going to wrap it up because I, I kept you for way too long and I so appreciate it. So tell us before you leave two things, one, what books do you recommend? And two, how can people get in touch with you? Sure. Um, well, um, I just happen to have one of my favorite real estate books. It's unfortunately it's out of publication. However, <laughs> however, um, this one was just acquired recently. So they're out there around um, in, in, in the used book market. Um, I'm going to put it on the screen so everybody can see it. And it's, uh, can you see that clearly? Oh, yeah. I can agree. Okay. And um, so this uh, Art and Science of Real Estate Investment Analysis by Edward John Golden was written back in the 70s. So there'll be things in there that people won't recognize like amortization tables uh, mortgage uh, compound mortgage uh, uh, interest tables um, and a whole bunch of formulas that people just use um, um, uh, a spreadsheet for. But um, there are many, many nuggets of valuable real estate investing um, uh, tidbits in, in this thing um, and shortcuts because when, when um, Ed Golden wrote the book, there were no PCs. There weren't smartphones. There were there was you had to do a deal and make it work on the back of a napkin, probably over a three martini lunch. Right. Um, and 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 so um, I found it invaluable um, uh, throughout my career to uh, have that. And then um, in in terms of getting a hold of me, um, I can be reached at my office, uh, Freedom Financial Funds, eight one eight three zero eight three eight eight one or M Klein K L E I N at freedomfinancialfunds.com. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. I so appreciate it. I mean, Thank you. gosh, that was so much information and I could talk to you all day, but I know you don't have all day. You're running a $50 million fund. So <laughs> I probably should let you go. I want to thank everybody out there for watching uh, People You Should Know segment of crowdfundinglawyers.net. Do not forget to go to crowdconvergecon.com to get your tickets to our event on February 2nd and 3rd in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you, Michael. And Thank I'll talk you. To you Bye. Bye.